Hey, it's Fifth Planet Keyforge here, aka Jupiter from Manlius, New York, and I'm here to tell you that we have our next monthly event coming up soon, and that event is going to be Oubliette. What is Oubliette? I'm here to explain it to you. First off, Oubliette tournament is going to take place on Sunday, August 29th, at 11 a.m. Eastern. Five rounds of Swiss, four, four, one, or better will make a single elimination top cut. It's a $10 entry fee. The form is on the website under tournaments. Um, just click on the, the menu and it says tournaments. Click on the word tournaments. It will take you to the page and set you where you need to go. There's a link to click on there to sign up for the entry form. Um, and all these details are there as well. Um, the format for this event can be edited up to August 29th at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. With that said, um, this tournament is also for league points. You earn two points by participating in the event. You earn one for each win that you get. So there's chances for that. Um, the top eight league point earners that are not already qualified will gain uh, entry into the KFPL Season 4, um, which will have details coming uh, in the near future. But exciting. And the format for this month is Oubliette. What is Oubliette? Let, let me explain it to you. All right, Oubliette basically is a format that was created by Time Shaper's own Aurora. Um, Lady Aurora basically came up with this idea. She ran a mock tournament. I played in it. I had such a blast. I asked her permission if we could use it for KFPL for one of our monthly events. And of course she said yes, because she's awesome. Um, but I really, really had a lot of fun playing this event, and it was really cool. So what I did is I took out 16, um, well, actually, I take, I take it back. There's only 15 decks of mine I took out of my case, and I took them out randomly. So I'm going to pretend like this is my entire collection, and now we're going to select an Oubliette uh, lineup. So the first thing I, you have to do is you have to think about what decks do you want to play and which decks are going to fit into the grand scheme of things. And I haven't even thought about it, so here I'm looking. And I do see that I have a lot of shadows here, right? Like, uh, it sticks out to me a bit. Like, it's in a lot of my decks. I see a little bit of logos, if this was my collection. I see a little bit of logos and stuff. So next I go through and I say, well, which of these decks do I really like playing? And which ones have, like, interesting house combinations? Um, and all of, all of these decks I really enjoy playing, so that's cool. Um, so let's look and say, hmm... I don't see that I, I don't seem to have any dis in my collection other than this one or two decks. So maybe dis is the house that I don't want to play. So by saying that, I am taking away my best deck, X Peters. That deck is pretty amazing. Um, but it seems like it has dis and logos, and both of those are probably going to be high picked houses, and it has Saurian. So um, there's a lot of like opportunity that this deck never gets to play anyway. So if I take this out of my equation, that means both of the, my all my disc decks that are in out that are out right now to be played would basically not be eligible to be chosen by me, which leaves me with only two decks out of my collection to the side, and I get to now choose these decks. Now these decks, you can choose whichever two decks you want. If I wanted to, I could pick like these two decks that have an overlap in shadows, but if my opponent picks Shadows as the ban, I would lose the ability to play because basically Shadows would then uh, trump be trumped out and I would have no deck to, to play. So I would automatically give that round to my opponent. Um, ideally, if you're playing competitively, that is not a good idea. Um, so what we need to do is we need to find something that kind of works and works together without overlaps and stuff. So first off... I only have one deck here that really is, is, is sporting any Brobnar, and it's Brobno Shadows and Sanctum, and it's Yvonne Demand Path Pig Keeper. Um, I like this deck. I really love playing it. So um, this is a really high option deck for me. I, I wouldn't mind playing this one in a tournament. And um, it's Sanctum Brobnar Shadows. That's a very odd house collection that I could choose that leaves me a lot of flexibility to pick out something that's just awesome for the rest of the way. So let's look. Um, I can't play Zonton anymore because it has an overlap with Sanctum, right? I can't. Can I play this one? I can still play this one. The Minstrel um, of Insightful Portals because there's no overlap, right? So this is a deck that's still in play for me. Um, this one has Sanctum, so I'm going to go ahead and say no onto that one. This one has uh, no overlaps either. So the, the Shuttle Pilot of uh, Annual... Amulet is still in play. 
This one has an overlap of Sanctum, so it would be out. This one has Sanctum as well. It would be out just to kind of expedite this a little bit more. This one does not, so this one's still in play as well. The Diviner of Unscrupul Unscrupled Perils. So all three of these are still in play. Um, is this one still in play? No, Shadows Overlaps. So we can't play that one. Um, shadows Overlaps, right? We know that. We know Shadows Overlaps here. We know Sanctum is an overlap. And then last but not least, we have the Miserly Pontifex. So... If I was going to play Yvonne, I would probably have to pick one of these four decks from my collection to play with it. So I would easily uh, be happy. I would be more than happy to do that because I probably would play Miserly Pontifex and come to the tournament with these two decks and a ban on this. So that's Oubliette. Oubliette basically says, I'm banning House Dis. This is out of it. Nobody that plays in any of the games of mine all day long are going to be able to house play a deck with the house dis in it. Um, and then I bring these two decks, and now and if they were to ban Logos, I would be able to choose both decks, which is really good, right? Because I get to basically choose and see what they're playing. Hopefully, Dis bans one of their decks, and I get to basically pick which deck I think is stronger versus my opponent's deck that has a Logos in it. If they pick anything else, like if they pick un Untamed, I'm in a good spot because there's no Untamed here either. Um, so this works out really good because I think Logos, Untamed, Dis, those are very high picks. I think Saurian could see... could. Be be a house that you see uh, banned and shadows could be a house that you see banned but that still leaves me a deck to play one of the one or the other right um and then um do these decks play good against those types of decks that's the key and uh, they do so i think that this would be actually a very sound oubliette cho choosing of my type so hopefully that helped you out in understanding as you watch me pick through the process but again you pick a house to ban, I ban this. So this is gone. We can't play this all day. So these are automatically out. Then I need to find decks that don't overlap in houses and strategically pick the decks that basically are going to line up well without this being played. And then if I can curve my decks to decks of quality that have no logos or um, have like untamed logos and stuff, like the more common powerhouses, the better. Um, and so that's for you to figure out and decide and, and as you go through your collection and figure out what you have. Again, so you have until August 29th at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time to basically make um, make your choice. Just remember that the house that you choose will not be played against you all day, and you will not play it all day. And then that when your opponent brings their house to the table, if you have none of the house that they that they chose, then you get to pick between your two decks. If you have one of the houses, if one of the houses does fall on on you, like in this case, let's say my opponent banned Brobnar, I would not be able to play Yvonne, and I would be forced to play Miserly Pontifex, and vice versa. If they pick on Fathomable Star Alliance or Saurian, this would be out, and these and these would be in. So, um, it's a real blast. It, it show it basically makes you play a little with a little bit more diversity. There's no SAS caps. There's no kind of restrictions. And um, honestly, like I think that you'll have a blast if you try it out. So hopefully we'll see you on Saturday, uh, August 29th at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time.